Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Thank you for being here. I appreciate everybody that's here live on the call that's gonna help us create this wonderful call. And uh, also those who are listening on the podcast, I appreciate you being here as well. I have been getting more uh, texts and uh, mostly private messages, people finding me on Facebook <clears throat> and reaching out and saying that they're grateful for the gratitude call. And I'm just so grateful that there are people out there that I don't even know about that are listening to this podcast and, um, and are, are gaining value from it. And I'm, I'm just really appreciative of all of you being here to help us create something really wonderful for people to listen to. Um, I, I really feel like um, this call, the time that we spend here, this 30 minutes that we spend with each other is... Um, it's a, it's a, it's a catalyst. It's a, um, you know, something that we can use to take us from point A to point B. Um, just being in that energy of gratitude is what allows even more experiences that are on that high vibration level to come to us. And, uh, I think I am going to use, yeah, I, I had a hard time really choosing a word or phrase. Um, for us to um, focus on today. And I think I am going to go back to that word catalyst. I had rejected that word in the beginning, but um, I, I'm going to go back to it. And I'm, I'm just going to share real quickly kind of the um, conflict that was going on in my mind a little bit so that we can really open our minds to, you know, what that word catalyst might mean and, and to allow our inspiration to be, you know, on a broader sense. I, I love it when there we're like um, moving forward or we're, you know, changing direction, stepping out of our comfort zone or whatever. And there's something that just kind of comes that helps us to be able to move from point A to point B. It's, uh, you know, we talked um, last week about um, the space between, and it's kind of like when you're in that space between you know, you've made the decision to move from one point to another, but you're not quite to that other point yet. And this being in this space between, I love all the tools and the helpers and the, the, you know, the things that, that happen, um, the people that show up, the angels, the, you know, the inspiration that we get from God, there's so many things that happen in that space between that are a catalyst to help us get to the next level, to the next place that we're headed to. So um, I'm going to put an S on the word catalyst, I'm grateful for catalysts, and we're going to focus for 90 seconds. We're going to do a private silent meditation on gratitude for catalysts and um, begin.
All right. Um, you know, there's so many things that happen in that space between where we left, you know, where we just left and where we're headed. Um, and we just really don't know all the things that are happening that are really catalysts to help us get there. Um, you know, I think about like being on a, a boat on a lake and if without oars and just sitting there out on the a boat on the lake and um, we're actually moving. I, I don't think you could really stay in the same place on a lake because there's always like ripples, there's waves, there's wind, there's all kinds of things that are like pushing and pulling you one direction or another. And eventually, hopefully, I would think that you would end up at some shore, even if you just sat there and did nothing. And so, you know, if you apply that to the space between, it's kind of interesting to, the thought is interesting um, just to think that maybe there are some invisible things happening. Um, you know, we've talked about uh, unseen evidence. We've talked about lots of things that kind of apply to this. Um, there's probably some things happening that I'm not even aware of, and maybe it's because of my intention, or maybe it's because of God's intention. Maybe there's, you know, because I know that there's a being that loves me, that's my father, my heavenly father, and uh, that he cares about what happens to me. And possibly there are some things happening even without me lifting a finger. And um, that's really um, kind of a cool thought that even if I'm not 100% sure or 100% in faith, 100% trusting myself or him or, you know, not knowing for sure if I'm headed in the right direction or whatever, but just following inspiration, my inspired shortcuts, that um, things can be working in my favor, even if I don't have all the answers. Who else has something that they would like to share? I'd like to share because this really got my brain thinking. But every cell in our body needs a catalyst. Um, it, needs, it needs a little swimmer that goes from the cell membrane down to the proteins to cause the activation process. And uh, drugs can provide that catalyst sometimes. Like serotonin is, is, that, is that chemical that is a little swimmer that goes inside of this inside of this inside of that area the space between the the the, the membrane and, and and the the process that the cell does right um, and um and also thought processes can can trigger that catalyst also it can also be a, a cause mm -hmm. that stimulates the cell and makes you know activates that little swimmer to take the message to go and, and tell that cell to do what it needs to do and so every single part of our body has um it is made up of those cells that need a catalyst in order to function and and i think uh even our life on this earth is is represented by you know how that cell <laughs> how the cells of our body work and that we we also need um something to help us navigate that space between where we are and and what we're becoming and that uh, those forces on the outside that 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 uh, help us to get to that place even though we're not even aware of how it works anyway that's i hope that made sense yeah yeah i appreciate that and you know all things that are truth point to christ and i see him as that catalyst that you know it, we all need each other i mean we're not here on the earth as uh, individuals to be able to, you know, return home all by ourselves. We definitely need each other. And, um, there's, there's always some earthly angel, you know, that can step in and help us. Um, I mentioned in, before we started the recording, how I appreciate my team. There's a lot of things that I couldn't do if I didn't have people that were supporting me. And so I'm super grateful for those people that are kind of like those swimmers that you're talking about that work on the space in between that, that kind of helps our things go from one thing to the next. And, um, and I'm also seeing as Christ is that catalyst also that helps us um, to go from point A to point B. It's, it's really important to have him. And yeah, so I'm just gonna stop there. It's great. Thanks, Phil. Robert. Well, feelings are a catalyst to a man's soul. And 
well, you used that word catalyst, a host of thoughts came to my mind, but one in particular, and that was, I believe it was Charles Good, Goodyear, I believe, there's a good direction to Goodyear, but I think it's good, Goodyear, who invented um, the process of balkanization of rubber, uh, making it pliable and soft. Uh, he learned the process, it was a, uh, the word catalyst, came when you use that word uh, and, he, and he invented that while he was in prison, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember my history. And, uh, and, and that leads into what Phil about uh, having thought was uh, thought as a catalyst um, to uh, feelings and to even your testimony, your testament of Christ uh, are all tied in as a catalyst, their experiences uh, become a catalyst as, uh, to understanding. So I do like, I like that you changed the word help, helpers to catalyst, because mm -hmm. uh, that is a very powerful word. Awesome. Thank you. And I think it was Laura that suggested the word catalyst, so I'm, I'm appreciative of her sharing that as well. And you're absolutely right. You know, one thing does lead to another. I mean, we have a feeling that is attached to a thought. So a thought is probably the first thing. I'm, I'm not sure what, you know, starts the, the chain of events, but um, somebody's probably said this before, that a thought produces a feeling that produces a motivation to act. And then those actions, you know, produce like the outcome, the experience that you're mm -hmm. having. And I, I love that you mentioned, you know, that things really great things have been created even by people that are in prison. Um, I think it was Paul that wrote uh, the Corinthians, if I remember right, um, letters in um, while he was in prison. And I hadn't really ever studied those before. When I really started studying, there's so many amazing lessons about money and uh, charity and wealth and all of that in the Corinthians. I'm just, I was like blown away when I was reading those. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And he did this while he's in prison. Um, yeah. Thank and you. They probably needed prison to write those things. Yeah. As, well, I, I remember when I had the heart attack, you know, eight years ago, I, um, had to sit in my front room for six to eight weeks with no physical activity, no stress. So I sat in a lounge chair in um, my front room and just read and journaled. And that was the catalyst that really started me on my path of purpose. So mm -hmm. sometimes it does take, you know, some time alone and deep thought. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Deep tea. Uh, so what came to me that there are these tools like meditation or some healing work that act as a catalyst to, uh, you know, be aligned to your inner being. Mm -hmm. And once you're aligned to your inner being, then there's this word that came to me, synchronicity. Synchronicity mm -hmm. start happening in your life that act as a catalyst to make you reach to that final God's plan. Mm. So the beginning is getting aligned in that inner being. And then once you're aligned, all things start lining up for you. Thank yes. you. I love that. Get uh, maybe one or two more shares. I thought of by their fruit, you shall know them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you think about a tree and so a tree has to do a tree has to grow and develop the root system and a strong trunk to to withstand winds and all of these things and it has to, and then the branches and the leaves and once all of those things are in place there needs to be that catalyst to flower and produce fruit mm. and so as we are as we are receiving and putting our place ourselves in a place to receive the nutrients we need that's how we have the best fruit and the best all good fruit comes from christ and so our catalyst i i mean you're you've already been talking about it i just wanted to add that that 
image of a tree and how Christ is the catalyst. Beautiful. Thank you. I also had the thought, and we, someone mentioned yesterday about wind being, um, I think it was Robert, being an uh, unseen evidence of God. And um, somebody also mentioned, I, I think it was Robert also that mentioned about like bees, you know, pollinate, but wind is like even more, it does it even more. And so when you're talking about roots and branches and trunk, you know, the, the structure of the thing of the plant or whatever is something that we can see. And it's, it's like the biggest part of the, the, you know, it's bigger than the fruit. It's bigger than the flowers. It's, you know, bigger than everything else that happens with it. Um, it's the thing that we can really see that's easy to see. And like our bodies, you know, are the thing that people see, but it's useless. It won't produce fruit if we don't have this small invisible wind that moves the pollen around or the bees that go, you know, the little tiny bees that move from one place to the next to, to pollinate it, it won't produce fruit. And how, in, how uh, interesting it is that we can look at these catalysts as sometimes the catalysts are unseen, sometimes they're tiny, but super important to, um, for the, the thing to be able to fill up the measure of its con- uh, creation. Thanks, Tyree. I appreciate that. So what, I had a okay. different, um, I, I woke up with some resistance in my entire being, like, um, and, you know, as I'm thinking about this word catalyst, like, it, it's, it's uncomfortable, right? Because um, catalysts are motivate are bringing change and change is uncomfortable. And we typically resist change. So the question for me was like, you know, I hear I am kind of working through like not, not resisting this discomfort and um, in me this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thinking about like, um, how do I approach, how do I allow the catalyst to do what they're designed to do in my life, you know, without resisting them, right? What's some, you know, and I thought one way, uh, one of the things was to look at it as an adventure. Mm-hmm. You know, you had mentioned that word adventure earlier. And like, if we just look at, um, you know, if I look at those um, as life as an adventure, right? Mm-hmm. And those catalysts are bringing me to what's next. Like if you're on a hike and you're like, oh, what's next? You know? when you're hiking down the trail or you're traveling, you don't know what you're going to see next. And, um, and so I'm, you're open, right? So I'm open to check those catalysts, the the changes to somebody coming along and helping me along my way. Um, more so than if I'm kind of doing my own, my usual thing over and over again, then I'm like, Hey, what are you doing here? You know, change is not welcome. Right. So it's being in that mindset of, um, of accepting the cat, the catalyst and accepting that movement, accepting it as an adventure. Yeah. So. I love that. I, I remember, you know, just kind of in the course of my progression, there was a moment when I just started loving being in the unknown. It was like, this is actually because change is constant. This is actually my most natural state of being in a place where I don't know the answers and, you know, I don't know where I'm going exactly. And I, when I really embrace that is this is the most natural state of being because it's like constant, then it really did start looking like an adventure instead of like scary. It's more like, like you said, being on a a path, a mountain path or something. Oh, I wonder what's around this corner. Maybe there's a moose standing there, (laughs) you know, that would, that would stop me from moving forward. And how cool is that? (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Otherwise, if you're like going to the grocery store, you know, right. Like in your usual mode of things and you're like, what a moose, what's that doing here? You know, (laughs) 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 I love it. I love it. I also want to mention, and then we're, uh, looks like deep tea has something too. So we'll grab uh, your thought too, deep tea before we move on to our permission process. 
but I want to mention also at 10 o'clock uh, this morning, Mountain Daylight Time, so it'd be like 12 o'clock Eastern Time, um, I'm going to be doing my first Facebook Live for a 21-day challenge, and um, the 21-day challenge is focused on you harnessing the power of Christ to be able to calm every storm. And the storm that we're going to be focusing on for this next 21 days is money, wealth, resources, having access to resources. And uh, the subject that I'm going to be um, sharing today is, um, you know, all things do point to Christ. And everything I, every time I create something, I can always see how it aligns with like Christ's life and, um, and this really applies. So I just want to put it on this uh, recording as well, that we, when Christ um, was publicly baptized, there were a lot of people who saw his baptism. It was like a public announcement, you know, of him going into the water it was a public announcement that he was dedicating his life to God. And then he went into the wilderness and he had the three temptations from Satan. And, um, and then it was after that temptation, those temptations, when he um, had his personal trial of his faith, that he was able to then do his first miracle and privately make that accept his call and step fully into his ministry. And I feel like that really applies here that we're no different than Christ. If we, I know that every single one of you has experienced this, where you make a public announcement, you choose a new belief, you say, I'm going to move up to the next level in some way, shape or form. And then all of a sudden resistance comes and it's no different than Christ. You make a public announcement, you make a choice, you decide to step out of your comfort zone you, to do something different. And there's going to be a time of preparation. There's going to be a time where you get to exhibit faith, where you get to understand fully what you're saying yes to, and then the trial of your faith. Are you willing to continue forward and, um, and to continue saying yes beyond those temptations? And that, after the trial of your faith, that is where you now are ready to fully step into what you have public, publicly announced before. So it's just part of the process. It's not something to resist. It's not something to be fearful of. It's just part of the process. And, you know, Christ was in the wilderness for 40 days fasting. And I'm sure that he wasn't just sitting there being hungry. There was some preparation that was happening. He was communing with God. He was learning about himself. He was, you know, preparing for these temptations that would allow him to step fully into his um, into his ministry. Um, deep tea. I kind of uh, thought of something, but it's kind of weaved into what you were just talking about. So for, I was just thinking and what came to me is taking action also acts like a catalyst for you to reach from point A to point B. So for me personally, I I started my spiritual journey just like three, four months ago. And I always knew that gratitude is like a high frequency and puts you into a vibration of receiving things. Mm -hmm. But that was just head knowledge for good one and a half months, though I knew it. Someone can say, I'm a learner, you know, I, I learn on my life. But until you don't put, put it into action, you're not really transforming. So I contacted you uh, like then one after for I think two months I knew gratitude is an important part of life and then I could just not put it uh, into practice in my life and then I just determined one day that you know I, I have to do something about it and that's how I kind of sat and went on play store and you know tried to find gratitude apps and went on in stuff went on Facebook trying to search pages that focus specifically on the gratitude topic so if I didn't take that action Action about one and a half month ago, I was not really transforming. So I think action acts like a catalyst from for you to go from point A to point B. Beautiful. That's um, like, what do they say? Applied knowledge is wisdom. And until you actually have that experience, 
um, you it it is just head knowledge. It's not really producing the enough vibrational whatever that causes you to be catalysted, <laughs> catapulted from one place to the next. That's part of quantum physics, right? Is um, you know getting things moving fast enough to be able to to um, be that catalyst that will project you to the next level. Well, I'm so glad that you found us in your searches, Deep T. You've been a, a really great addition to our calls. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and um, take a deep breath. And a lot of really awesome things have been shared. And I know that um, this new knowledge that you've been receiving, the new internal understanding that's been happening here today, is going to be a perfect catalyst that will allow you to move from point A to point B from wherever you um, have been to the place where you are going and excited for what we get to learn during this permission process. So go ahead and take another deep breath and just allow yourself to be in this space between and notice how you are moving even when you don't have you know full knowledge of where you know what what to do in this unknown space that because you're living and breathing that you are moving you're vibrating and also um, just being open to know is there something that you've been resisting that really would be the catalyst that would allow you to go faster more efficiently and to get where you need to go even easier. Is there something you've been resisting that would be the catalyst that would help you get to your point B even faster and easier? And as you're becoming clear with what that is that you've been resisting that could be the catalyst, what is the limiting belief that has surrounded this, um, whatever it is, that is um, holding you back, that is keeping you from actually utilizing this to its full potential to be able to move through this space even faster. What's your limiting belief? And as you're becoming clear with what that limiting belief is, also realize that there is a cost to it. Of course, we know that it's uh, gonna keep you stagnant in that unknown space. But what is the cost to you, not only just in your moving forward, but in all areas of your life? If you look at these words as just words, how must the universe interpret these words? What would be the cost to your relationships? What would be the cost to your money, your wealth? What would be the cost to your personal power, to you know, your spiritual growth? What is the cost of this limiting belief? And if you don't like that cost, if you'd like to choose something different, you can give yourself permission to do that. And I'm gonna give you an opportunity right now to give yourself permission to change that by saying yes. 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 Awesome. So what are some new beliefs? So what are some new beliefs that would actually propel you even faster towards point B where you're headed and some new beliefs that will take the place of that old limiting belief will totally clear it out will give you more of a sense of being in this um, adventure and excitement for where you're at and where you're headed what are some new beliefs that will take the place of that old limiting belief and get you to where you're going in the simplest and the easiest and fastest way And those new beliefs, I invite you to go back in your imagination to really feeling yourself inside this space and how you noticed before that you were moving just a little bit because of the vibration that's happening just within your body and all the forces that might be around you that would be pushing and pulling you one way or the other. But with these new beliefs, I invite you to go back to that space and see what's changed, to see how you are moving now. 
and the direction that you're moving and the feelings, the emotions that you're experiencing now with these new beliefs being in the space of unknown, in the space between A and B. And maybe it's not even the space of unknown anymore. Maybe it's the space of faith. Maybe it's the space of confidence. Maybe it's the space of knowing, of gratitude, of whatever that space can be called. Maybe name that space. What is it that you feel now inside that space between? point A and point B. And final question, what is the one most important thing that you could do today that would continue you on this path that would help you to um, even more powerfully be um, catapulted into the new place that you're headed? What's your inspired shortcut? What's the one most important thing that you could do today that would maintain and even increase the speed of you arriving at your desired destination? And uh, we have um, maybe one or two minutes. I know we're past time, but we did get started a little bit later. So we're gonna take in about one or two minutes um, for some shares and I do want to also invite anyone, if you're needing some extra support in this area, to reach out to me. And all you have to do is just go to askwileen.com and that will um, take you to my calendar and you can schedule a 15 minute call. Askwileen.com. Who has something that they would like to share about their experience today? I'll share. Um, Thanks, Kathy, and then Bill. So my inspired step has to do with um, letting people hear my voice. And so, mm. so coming out and saying something on this call mm -hmm. actually is part of that, but um, just that the resistance of the phone calls that I need to make, the things that I need to do, um, overcoming the, the things that um, keep me from moving forward on, on my inspired step. Um, just, stepping over those strings just um being willing and able and, and just going forward to serve and who can i serve today so so kathy what was the resistance what what did you were you able to put a name to the resistance that might be the catalyst um the resistance there's just a lot of uh, procrastination is a huge part of it but um when you were talking about just sometimes the, the resistance is even coming up with the limiting belief putting a name to that is not always easy and I just and sometimes I think why do I want to spend so much time trying to figure that out just set mm -hmm. it aside and move forward so the resistance is <laughs> resistance it's it's just the procrastination it's like thinking that you have to put a name to something like admitting that this is really what I'm doing is that right mm -hmm. yeah something like that so if you can just put a name to it if you can just decide if you could just choose that this is what I'm doing that that would be the catalyst for you mm -hmm. okay so I invite you to take some time either after the call or right now to just do that. Um, make the commitment right now and just like that public announcement, you know that there's going to be some preparation that will happen, maybe some temptation, some you know, resistance that you need to have that personal trial of your faith. Um, but just knowing that you know, this is what's required to step fully into your ministry and how you get to support and serve people. The funny thing is when you said put a name to it, I'm like, okay, I'll just call it Fred. Go call it what? Way, Fred. Call Fred? It Fred. I love it. Way, Fred I'm Fred is your catalyst. <laughs> I love it. Fred's my catalyst. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Phil, did you have something? Yeah. So, so my limiting belief is that I can't do this. Uh, because I'm alone, and the I, it, what it brought to me was uh, a remembrance of a trip that I <clears throat> took a few years ago, and I had to I was going to southern to this place in central Utah, and I had to get there, and it was dark, and 
I was in my car and I was alone and, and my headlights only shines like so far in front of me. And as I thought about where I had to go and crossing all this terrain, um, and you know, I had to get to this destination. I, I had all these thoughts of, you know, well, what if I, what if something happens, you know, along the way, what if, what if I run into some kind of a roadblock or what if I can't actually get where I'm going and I get stuck out in the middle of nowhere by myself. And as I took my trip, then I just had this thought, you know, like all I need to do, go is drive as far as my headlights can shine. Mm-hmm. And when I get there, then my headlights shine more and they, it reveals that path to me. And, but if I stop and I try to take everything in, the whole thing, the whole experience at one time, it's, it, it scares me and I don't move. I don't, I don't, I didn't dare take the steps because I couldn't see the whole path. And it just revealed to me one moment at a time. And eventually I got to my destination. I was fine, but there was a lot of fear in doing this on my own. And awesome. I, yeah, um, kind of bite-sized pieces too. Um, I know I, if I am traveling on a long trip, I'll look just like two hours ahead and that's my destination. You know, I look at that as my destination and I'm able to go farther when I'm not looking at the whole, you know, eating the whole elephant all at once. So thank you. I would love to continue sharing. I know there's others that could share, um, but we do need to end our call today. I've gotten in the habit of going over time the last uh, couple of weeks and and I really need to to rein it in so I apologize I know that there's lots of really great shares um, I do invite Can you I say one thing I'm so sorry Mylene to Kathy <laughs> just one little thing to Kathy okay sure Kathy, like your voice is like awesome I mean when you share, there's so much depth and beauty there. And I just like, I just have to tell you that today. I just had to tell you that. Thank you. Okay. You know what, Deep T, you're going to get to share too. So go ahead. Thank you. So I was uh, in the permission process. Uh, I think I have a difficulty in uh, letting go of things, people, past. So I think if if I let go of things, that's going to act like a catalyst for me to propel me forward because I, I don't know if Mm. I see hope in future, something like that. That's what happened to me in the permission process today. Thank you. I'm so glad that you shared because think about that. If you were like sitting on a catapult, but you were holding on to the catapult or you're holding on to like a tree behind you when the catapult is let go, it, you're not going to go anywhere you're going to stay right there on the catapult or you're going to stay right back there holding onto the tree. The catapult's not even going to serve you. So I'm really glad that you shared that. We do have to let go of what we know. We have to let go of what was in the past. We have to let go of, of even what's going on right now. If we're going to use a catalyst in the way that it's supposed to be used. Thank you. I'm so glad that you shared that. Okay. Well, thank you all for hanging out with me this morning and for um, all of your shares. This has been an awesome call. Um, I just want to, um, I'm not sure if Brittany, yeah, Brittany, you're still on. We had a conversation yesterday. I would love for you to share this call with uh, this recording with um, those ladies that you were um, sharing with me yesterday. Um, I just really feel that this would be something that would support them. Would you do that for me? Of course. I already had that thought. Thank okay. you. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you all. Um, I look forward to being back together with you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Time. And please go to um, please go to the Breakthrough with Gratitude Facebook group. Share there. Share your thoughts there. We love to continue our interaction. And love you guys. We'll talk to you again tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, 
go to my website, wylingbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.